Have you ever wondered how digital maps are made? Well, Teleatlas invited us onto one of their mapping vans to find out. The Teleatlas Roadshow featured presentations from Teleatlas themselves, plus a demonstration of software products from a number of their partners, such as TomTom, Navman, Via Michelin, Mio, etc. But of course, what we'd come to see was the mapping van itself in action. Taking a tour around the van, we can see a number of cameras and sensors. Uh, in particular, there's a GPS and a gyro for when the GPS signal is not available. As the van is moving, the cameras are continually taking images. There is a separation between the cameras. This allows them to have a stereoscopical view of the surroundings. These stereoscopic images allow the data to be analysed in 3D. This allows not only distances, but heights to be worked out. Each image has a GPS location associated with it, so the data analysers know exactly where it was taken. Moving inside the van, you can see a pair of hard disk drives. These record both a master and a backup image. When a disk is full, which normally takes about a week, it is mailed to Belgium headquarters, where it is checked before being sent to India for processing. The whole system is based around two servers, which has its own network, power supply and everything required to keep it going. I'll now hand over to one of the Belgian surveyors who will explain how the whole system works in practice. Right now, just for giving the demonstration, they made just a tiny little road here black. But normally, it's uh, for instance in Belgium, we have to. Uh, Belgium is one project, all the, the highways and the, the national roads, for instance. So all these roads are marked black. Yeah. Uh, when we drive over one of these roads, the system uh, draws a green line so we can see uh, what we have already done and what we still have to do. Here, the images all the cameras make, uh, you can see on it. Uh, you, we just have to check uh, if the quality is okay. Um, the brightness is controlled automatically, but we can still, uh, in extreme circumstances, make an extra adjustment. Uh, this system also tells us what the maximum speed is we can drive. For instance, in summer, uh, it, and the sun is shining, shining it will be 130. Uh, but in winter, it's, it can be uh, only 40, and that's because the, the shutter speed is lower uh, in winter. There, are, there aren't many problems anymore, but in the beginning, uh, the biggest problem was maybe finding the road, <laughs> because you had 100 maps here, and <laughs> you had constantly switch and switch, and yeah. Do you use paper maps still? Excuse me? Do you use paper maps still, or is it all sat nav? It's all, it's all digital now. It's all digital? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is uh, one of the two systems we work with. You see here a digital map of the region, and uh, the roads we have to drive are made black. When, uh, when we drive over one of these roads, the system draws a green light, or green line over it, so we know exactly what we have already done and what we still have to do. The other system we work with is the car map system. Uh, you can see here the, the, the images of all the cameras. Uh, we just have to check the quality of the images and uh, if necessary we have to make uh, an adjustment. Uh, we also have to look out for uh, flies. When they fly in on, the, on the screen we have to wipe them off. The system also tells us what the maximum speed is we can drive. Right now it's 75 uh, kilometers an hour. Uh, this depends on the lights and for instance in summer when uh, the sun is shining we can drive uh, 130 but in, in winter time when it is pretty dark it's only 40 kilometers an hour. Okay. I've actually got the uh, images superimposed on the map as well. Yeah, it's for we can do two things in one time. Uh, I can tell the driver where she has to go and I can uh, control the quality of the images.